from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An overnight crash on the city's northeast side leads to several lane closures along I-35. I'm Stephen Cavazos. Coming up this morning, what police believe led to that crash. Well, in the midst of holiday travel, police presence at the El Paso International Airport after an armed robbery leads to a shooting. What we've learned so far. And here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Can't see too much out there. 49 degrees to start your weekend. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. Happy weekend. 6 o'clock this Saturday, November 20th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Three-day weekend. For Sarah Costa, how'd it go? It was great. You know, I, I got, my mom's in town right mm -hmm. now. We drove to Houston yesterday. Hi, Patty. Hi, Patty. She's probably still asleep. No, actually, she's probably watching, <laughs> knowing my mom. But Sarah, the traffic, because it was the Friday before, you know, holiday travel and stuff, the traffic to and from Houston was insane. And I'm sure today, it might be the same thing. So weather-wise, yeah. what can people expect on the roads? Well, you know, it should be fairly okay on the roads other than the usual traffic. The biggest thing we'll be looking out for is tomorrow. There is going to be a cold front moving through. And if you have early morning travel plans this morning around San Antonio, you're going to have to watch out for some fog. Outside right now, you can see that fog. It's just been forming over the last hour or so as those temperatures have come close to the dew points. And in fact, when you look at the visibility, you can see at the airport, currently measuring 10 mile visibility, which is perfect, but just to the south and to the east, down to a quarter of a mile at JBSA Randolph, down to a quarter of a mile visibility at Stinson, half a mile at Port SA, and down to a less than two miles in New Braunfels. And again, the humidity is on the rise. The dew points are right there with the temperatures, and so it is cool out there this morning. 47 in Lotus, 46 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 41 in Comfort, 45 in Bulverde, and you'll notice that it's it's warmer across parts of the southeast, and that's because that humidity is increasing from the Gulf of Mexico. 53 at JBSA Randolph and 52 in Pleasanton. So this weekend, you know, today it's going to be a nice day. We're going to see those skies clear, and in the afternoon it should be partly cloudy and 74 for the high. But all day long, the humidity will be increasing. So that means tomorrow morning only at 62 degrees for the morning low. We're going to have more fog tomorrow morning and a small chance for an isolated shower or storm as a cold front moves through. I'll tell you how strong that front will be coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, emergency crews forced to close several lanes overnight after a crash on the city's northeast side. This is what we know right now. It happened along I-35 and Judson Road. Stephen Gavazos joining us live downtown this morning. Stephen, do we know a cause yet? Good morning, Max. Well, San Antonio police do believe that alcohol did play a factor in this overnight crash. Now, that crash did lead to some damage along the busy corridor and led to two lanes of 35 to be closed for some time. Just take a look at this video. Now, this crash did happen just after one this morning. Police do tell us that the driver of the vehicle was heading northbound on 35 and Judson when he lost control. That vehicle rolled over several times and eventually landed on a guardrail. TxDOT was called out to repair several feet of that guardrail, but again, two lanes of that that uh, traffic had to be closed for some time as first responders worked to clear it all up. Now, thankfully, the driver and another passenger inside that car were not seriously hurt. However, that driver was arrested on the scene and is now facing charges of driving while intoxicated. Reporting live downtown this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. In your morning headlines, an armed robbery ends in a shooting last night at the El Paso International Airport. Obviously, this happening right at the start of the busy holiday travel weekend. Police have confirmed the robbery victim was shot. They haven't disclosed his condition just yet, but dispatcher said no one was taken to the hospital from the scene. That usually is a sign that the shooting was deadly. A source from the airport telling a local El Paso news station that a person who died was an airline employee, but officials have not yet confirmed that. Information is still limited right now, but they are planning to provide more info throughout the morning. Well, wrong way driver in West Texas crashes into a school bus carrying members of a high school band. Three people were killed, but none of them students. Take a look at these images on your screen. This happened yesterday afternoon on Interstate 20 in Big Spring. That's west of Fort Worth. DPS officials say the bus was from Andrews High School and was headed to a football game when it was hit by a wrong way driver. That truck bursting into flames. The driver of the truck and two adults from the school bus died. Well, for the moment, a big win for the Biden administration regarding the president's roughly $1.9 trillion social safety spending package. But 
Getting the bill through the Senate is a much tougher challenge. Yesterday, House Democrats passing the president's ambitious economic and climate agenda. Everything from universal pre-K to paid leave to home health care and so much more is in this House package. But Republicans are blasting the bill. It is expected to undergo major changes in the Senate to get at least 50 senators on board. A paid family leave, which is a top White House priority, is likely to be on the chopping block. CDC is endorsing booster shots for all Americans over the age of 18. It comes just as the busy holiday travel season gets underway, and some states are experiencing a surge of infections. That's right. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the very latest. Millions more Americans are now eligible for an extra dose of protection from COVID-19. Vote number one passes. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky signing off on recommending boosters for all Americans 18 and older after a CDC advisory panel's unanimous vote. Only one in five people who were already eligible for a booster have received their extra dose. Some CDC advisors pointing out many people were hesitant because of questions about eligibility. The guidelines, though well-intentioned, were generating confusion. Today's vote clears that up. Am I eligible? The answer is yes. CVS and Walgreens will be offering boosters for all those newly eligible starting today. 14 states had already expanded booster eligibility. Meantime, people in some states are already having trouble finding booster availability. For this location, we don't have any appointments. Oh. Yes. Fully booked. Meantime, COVID infections are on the rise across the country. In New Mexico, daily cases have increased by more than 60% in the past three weeks. We are seeing extremely high volumes of patients presenting with influenza-like or COVID-like illness. Most of these patients are unvaccinated. This is overwhelming our healthcare system. With health officials looking to prevent a holiday surge, doctors are urging the unvaccinated to roll up their sleeves and parents to get their children vaccinated. I think it's quite safe if everyone is vaccinated. If you have unvaccinated members, uh, using rapid testing can make a big difference. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Time now, 607, 50 degrees out. We're still ahead on GMSA, one couple isn't celebrating their anniversary. They're celebrating their joy of running. How they managed to reach their goal of running a marathon in all 50 states together. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, coming up next, how one woman is using theater as a way to help children with hearing loss. We'll be right back. Every day, 33 babies are born in the U.S. with permanent hearing loss. If not identified early, it's almost impossible for many of them to acquire the fundamental language, social and cognitive skills to succeed in school and in society. That is why one woman is now helping thousands of children with hearing loss thrive by using theater as therapy. David Sears has the story. It's a performance of a lifetime. Hello, darling. And proof these children with hearing loss can do anything. I was born with hearing loss. Teddy, along with many of his fellow actors, are learning to speak words they've never said before, building their vocabulary and their confidence on stage. I can get the best speech sounds from a child in any costume. So if the child's working on their T sound, I put them in a turtle outfit and it's like, what costume are you wearing? They're like, turtle, like, no, turtle. They're like, oh, turtle. I'm like, good speech, you know? Michelle Christie started No Limits Theater Group 25 years ago to help kids stuck in a silent world. I'm a teacher of the deaf, so I want the kids to project so it's really important for them in their lives and not to be too scared to talk. Doing it at the theater is a very, safe place to do it. They have other friends who are in similar situations. Michelle found many low income students couldn't afford private therapy. So Michelle expanded her services with three education centers in California and Las Vegas, offering free support, therapy and enrichment programs to hundreds of children and their families each year. We opened up the after school program because the school's district was only given 15 minutes of speech therapy a week with a group of kids, which means Nobody's picking up a language. Kathy Buckley is the official No Limit spokesperson and knows exactly what these kids are up against. I did not get an education growing up. And most deaf children grow up, graduate from high school with a third or fourth grade reading level. I'm one of them. I don't want these kids to grow up feeling less than. 
I want these kids to know it's okay to have a hearing loss. What's not okay is not being able to communicate. I want them to have a voice. David Hawkins was diagnosed with hearing loss at nine months old. He was in No Limits very first production in 1996. Rub your hands together, warm them up. For the audience clapping, I couldn't hear the people as much as I felt them. When I got my cochlear implant a couple of years ago, I actually heard the audience laughing and cheering me out, and I was like, oh, really, a game changer. No limit had changed my life. We can build their confidence in their language skills. They can do anything. We can do it! No Limits is the only organization serving children who have hearing loss between the ages of 3 and 18. There is no cost for lower income families. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Great story. Back here at home. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, that fog is you Sarah Spivey, that's pretty intense there. Well again, that camera is up in elevation, so you're pretty much getting a low cloud. That's all you're seeing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I knew the fog was bad, I didn't realize it was it, that it, bad. It is it is dense in some areas. So if you do have early travel plans this morning, uh, you're gonna have to watch out for that fog. Here's a look a little closer to the ground, still oh. up there, and you can see those. Uh, lights disappearing there of the Waterburger off in a distance. So, uh, yeah, we got some Texas, yeah, of hope. <laughs> Texas sized fog out there this morning. It is 51 degrees and cloudy. Now, even just about 10 minutes ago, temperatures were in the upper 40s. So temps are rising and dew points are rising too. The temperature and the dew point fairly close to each other. That is why we have the visibility lower today. Visibility at the airport limited to half a mile. Temperatures elsewhere, 43 in Kerrville, 45 in Bandera, 43 in Hondo, and it's 52 in New Braunfels, 53 in at JBSA Randolph and 52 in Pleasanton. Here's a look at the visibility. Uh, the fog is low, fairly just right along I-35 there. Visibility down to less than a mile in New Braunfels, down to a quarter of a mile at JBSA Randolph and at Stinson, down to half a mile in San Antonio, down to half a mile at Port S.A. But fine visibility up in the higher elevations uh, where the uh, humidity is just slightly lower. We're not really seeing uh, the intense fog like what we can see out there right now. And you can actually see the clouds increasing from the south and from the east on the satellite picture. So along and east of 35, that's where we're dealing with the fog this morning and throughout the, the morning hours. This is going to move on up to the north and to the west. So I do anticipate a fairly cloudy start to the day here for most of us around the metro area. Meanwhile, it's uh, nice and clear out toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass early this morning. So here's what we can expect today. We'll still be fairly cloudy around 10 and then partly cloudy for the afternoon. We'll be at 58 at 10, 68 at noon, 74 for the afternoon high temperature. And throughout the day today, we're going to have increasing humidity. Sun is going to set at 537. It'll be mild tonight, not uh, cool at all. In fact, temperatures will still be in the uh, mid 60s by 10 p.m. South winds today at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. That's, of course, bringing in that Gulf of Mexico humidity. So as I just mentioned, throughout the day today, dew points will be rising humidity will be rising by tomorrow morning. Dew points will be in the low 60s. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to have more fog tomorrow morning, not just around 35, but also off to the west toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass in the early morning hours tomorrow. We'll be in the low 60s and then clouds will be stubborn tomorrow. It's going to be hard for us to see much sunshine and then a front is going to move through right at around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and with that front, we could have a small chance for an isolated shower or storm, but really this is going to be a weak front. You're really only going to notice a big difference in the humidity because that front is going to sweep away the humidity that we will have been building throughout the day today. Again, only bringing a small chance for an isolated shower. We'll be back into the 50s by midnight. Then looking at low temperatures, nice and chilly to start the day on Tuesday. And then as we can see, we'll be looking at humidity rising again as morning lows will be back in the 60s by Thanksgiving. Speaking of, here's a sneak peek for your Thanksgiving. It does look like we are going to have cloudy skies with scattered showers on Thanksgiving itself. High temperature only in the upper 60s and then a front is going to arrive on Thanksgiving Day. That'll set up a cooler Black Friday 
but we are going to have another chance for an isolated shower or storm on Black Friday as well. So not necessarily football in the backyard weather on Thanksgiving itself, but still, uh, you know, we could use a little bit of rain. It's been fairly dry this November, so there's a Thanksgiving sneak peek. And again, you can see the humidity rising outside right now. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 618, 50 degrees out. Well, coming up next, how one teen was able to give away hundreds of shoes to young children in need and how you can do the same. So inside, we have a letter to each student um, signed by myself or someone else on the team. We have our new Bomba socks and then under is the pair of sneakers. All right, 400 pairs of new shoes were given away to students in Arizona yesterday. 17-year-old Sam Bregman orchestrated the giveaway at a local elementary school where more than 40% of students come from low-income households. Sam is part of a local nonprofit in Arizona. Under his leadership, they collected more than $14,000 in donations from businesses, then used it to buy hundreds of pairs of new shoes and socks. And we know that need is very real here in our community. So if you'd like to help a child in need of a good pair of shoes, there is still time to make donations to our Share the Shoes Drive. We've teamed up with the San Antonio Police Department again, trying to gather as many new shoes as possible for local children in need. We're looking for shoes of all sizes, toddlers to teens. All of the shoes donated will benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month just in time for the holidays. You can make the donations at any SAPD substation through November 30. If you have any questions, we have all the answers. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 622, 51 degrees out. Well, coming up after the break, one couple celebrating a big milestone. They have run a marathon in all 50 states. Why this accomplishment is so special to them and what advice they have for other runners. Good morning and welcome back. So some people run, some people do marathons, but not everyone, especially couples, runs marathons in all 50 states. But guess what? That's what one Kansas couple has just accomplished. Okay, so Marla Roden ran her first marathon in 1983 and her husband Brad ran his first marathon in 87. A few years back, they decided to run a marathon in every state and they have now accomplished that goal. Especially with last year, with all the issues that came up, um, I had some health issues and the pandemic, and being able to, I honestly didn't know if, if I'd be able to do it, but it was, um, it was motivation to, to get out and keep going, so the fact that we were able to do it means a lot. As we age, you know, it's something we can look back on and be really proud of that we've done. Well, now I'm motivated. For anyone who wants to train for a marathon, they say, it all starts with taking the first steps. Man, my knees hurt just thinking, thinking of that. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So impressive. Time now, just about 627, 51 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. Woo. Highlights, late last night's late round, second round high school playoffs, Fredericksburg and Central Catholic both moving on. And coming up next, San Antonio police make an arrest in an arson case, how detectives were able to track down the suspect. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. 6.30 this morning, Saturday, November 20th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. You had a long weekend. You were just talking about Pleasanton. Yeah, Pleasanton, uh, the high school, the football team, mm -hmm. they won their second playoff game. So congratulations to them. Congratulations. We're going to have high school sports in just a moment. But for those who did sit through the games, a picture perfect night, Sarah Spivey. Really was a great evening. Temperatures got chilly very quickly last night. Uh, but Humidity is on the rise and you can actually see it this morning in the form of fog. Here's a look outside right now with live cam. We've got fog in the area that is currently uh, obstructing views out there and visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in many places. That is dense fog that could cause some problems if you're traveling on the roads early this morning. Uh, visibility down half a mile at the airport down to three quarters of a mile in New Braunfels and the fog in low stratus starting to move northwest into the hill country as well. So visibility is starting to be affected at Bernie Stage Airfield right on the Bear and Kennedy.
Kendall County line. Temperatures on the rise this morning. 52 degrees in New Braunfels, 53 at JBSA Randolph, but it is chilly across parts of the Hill Country. 41 in Comfort and 42 in Kerrville. A big travel weekend for a lot of folks out there. Uh, here's what you can expect today across the state of Texas. It should be nice and quiet. No real weather problems on the roads. Of course, we are going to be seeing weather uh, uh, problems on the roads when it comes to traffic just in general because it's going to be such a busy travel weekend. But as you can see, even tonight, uh, we'll be looking at clouds increasing and a cold front is going to arrive into San Antonio and move across Texas tomorrow. This could cause a little bit of rain around the Houston area tomorrow. So if you have plans to travel east toward Houston tomorrow, a little bit of rain possible. Otherwise, we're going to have a small chance for isolated showers around San Antonio when that front arrives. We'll talk about how that front will impact our weather heading into next week in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man accused of setting a house fire now behind bars. San Antonio police say a 19 year old set fire to a west side home on Broadview Drive near Culebra Road and Loop 410. Stephen Cavazos joining us live downtown. Stephen, how are investigators able to track down the suspect? Well, Max, Sarah, investigators do say that the suspect, according to the arrest affidavit, Timothy Hughes bragged about setting that home on fire by sending a series of videos to those victims. Now, this all happened back uh, on November 15th. Now, a woman did tell investigators she found her home broken into and discovered a box burning on the floor of her kitchen with a knob to the stove turned on. Several important documents were also taken from that home, including social security numbers and birth certificates. It was during that investigation investigation that woman alleges she began receiving threatening calls from the suspect. The affidavit goes on to say that the woman's daughter began receiving photos from Hughes on Facebook Messenger showing the social security card he had taken from the home. Now that woman's daughter also told investigators she recorded a video of Hughes bragging on Instagram Live about taking the family's information and burning the house down. Now Hughes was arrested yesterday and he is facing two charges of arson and also threat to a family. Now his combined bond right now is at $155,000. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Well, the discussion of changing the name of Enrique Barrera Parkway, formerly known as Old Highway 90, is resurfacing and something City Council will have to decide on again. The highway's name was changed in 2015 to honor the late councilman and Edgewood ISD trustee, but some people think the name should go back to Old Highway 90. Business owner Michael Cormans and his supporters argued the new name of Enrique Barrera Parkway confuses some people, and that's a problem for businesses on the road, he says. They want it to be called Historic Old Highway 90. City Council members is, are expected to take up the issue by March. In your morning headlines, we are seeing fallout in cities across the country on the aftermath of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial verdict. So take a look in Oregon, the local county sheriff's office there declared a riot in Portland last night. That started with a demonstration downtown to protest the not guilty verdicts on Twitter. The department says participants broke windows, damaged doors of city facilities in New York. A group of protesters rallied last night outside of the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Rittenhouse found not guilty on all charges in the matters of the deaths of two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin from last year. Well, a man on the U.S. Marshals 15 most wanted list found dead in a house in South Carolina. 70 year old Frederick Cecil McLean had been on the run for more than 16 years. He was wanted in California for sexual assault. A neighbor went to go check on him earlier this month and found his body decomposing. An autopsy this week determined it was McLean. It turns out he had been living there for 15 years under the alias James Fitzgerald. The coroner says he likely died in July of natural causes. The exact cause of death is pending. A jury is set to resume deliberations Monday in the civil trial against the Unite the Right rally organizers. The event in Charlottesville, Virginia, ended with one woman dead, many others injured. This all happened, remember, back in 2017. Residents and counter-protesters are suing individuals white supremacist groups, nationalist organizations. The defendants argue that the plaintiffs haven't proven that they organized racial violence. The jury deliberated without reaching a verdict yesterday, so the judge sent them home for the weekend. Well, more charges for disgraced South Carolina attorney Alex Murdaugh. A state grand jury has indicted Murdaugh on more than two dozen new financial crimes. 
Prosecutors say he stole nearly $5 million in settlement money he had obtained for his dead housekeeper, an injured state trooper, among other people, and fees meant for his law firm. The indictments charge Murdaugh with money laundering, computer crimes, and forgery, among other crimes. Well, new findings of two studies released in regards to COVID impact on pregnancies. Now, research shows the chance of death or stillborn among pregnant COVID-19 patients increased when the Delta variant emerged. The first study is from the CDC, and it shows women diagnosed with COVID-19 are more likely to suffer from a stillbirth, and that risk increased when the Delta variant came on the scene. A second study out of Mississippi showed that deaths among pregnant COVID patients rose and the Delta variant became dominant. Back here in our community, happening today in Kerrville, the VA Medical Center looking to hire nurses for multiple positions at the Community Living Center. They're going to be hosting a job fair today starting at 8 a.m. going until noon. They're looking to hire registered nurses, licensed vocational nurses, and nursing assistants. Today's job fair will be at the VA Medical Center's auditorium on Memorial Boulevard. COVID protocols will be in place. Today is another opportunity to get your COVID vaccine for you and your child. Metro Health will be hosting a pop-up clinic today from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at New Christian, New Creation Christian Fellowship. That's off of Four Winds Drive near I-35 and Loop 410 Interchange on the city's northeast side. The Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines will be available, as well as flu shots. They will also offer the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. Time now, 638, 51 degrees out. Max, it's officially high school pl uh, playoff season. Oh my goodness. Yes, it is. We're going to have all the highlights that you need to see. Central Catholic, our neighbors, go to the next round. We're going to explain. Plus, coming up, we'll give you a preview to today's new episode of Ooh. Texas Eats As My Stomach Growls on Q. David Elder takes us a inside quad burger? a burger joint serving up one of, if not the, lar the largest cheeseburgers in San Antonio. Mm. Two words. Challenge accepted. <laughs> well, we can't see much right it's here. It's pretty challenging out camera. there. <laughs> We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for what you need to know before you head out the door. Now, if you want to go carnivore, oh man, we you got, got a carnivore. Big, yeah, big cheese. <laughs> we actually started this about uh, two years ago when we opened up this uh, location. But yeah, you got four patties, two pounds of meat. You got American, Swiss, uh, pepper jack, the cheddar cheese, and then nacho cheese on top. And on this one, we actually added bacon to it. Oh uh, my God. Five strips of bacon on there, all right? So yeah, you definitely, yeah, this will fill you up. This thing is just absolutely loaded. Yes. Over the top. This is like the cheeseburger. If you've been waiting a month for a cheeseburger, this is the one you want to try. Look at this thing! It's like the Mount Everest of cheeseburgers. Yeah. I got to try to take a bite oh, out of this. Uh, I mean, try. I'm going to try. I don't know if I can unhinge my jaw. I got to go anaconda on this thing. <laughs> the big cheese. <laughs> going to give it a bite. Here we go. Good. Close, 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 close. <laughs> wow. The big cheese is a monstrosity of a burger. Two pounds of meat, all kinds of cheese in there, loaded up, melty all over the edges. The fries on the side become cheese fries because so much cheese is pouring out. I, mean, I think he got all patties in that in that bite. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Goals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, holiday season right around the corner. The official Christmas tree at the Capitol ready for decorating 84 foot white fur road on the tractor trailer from Six Rivers National Forest clear across the country in California. The tree made pit stops on its journey, visiting towns along the way. Obviously very special people around the country. Decorations for this year's tree also coming from California where they were made by hand in several different communities. Back here at home, holiday lights are up at the San Antonio Zoo and you can check them out from now until the new year. Just take a look at some of these displays. Two brand new 32 foot LED holiday trees will dance to music. There's also a light tunnel. Waterburger helped make all this happen. If you want to go, you need tickets. Just log on to the zoo's website. And the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival at Incarnate Word is back this year in person. The gates will open at 3 p.m. for the lighting ceremony at 6 p.m. and fireworks at 9.30 p.m. Our very own Steve Spreester will be emceeing that event. If you can't make it tonight, the lights will be on from dusk to dawn every day at the university through January 6th. This is one of my favorite events here. I used to live very close there. Mm -hmm. 
and I love December because I would just walk my dog Scooby every night through there and he would be like, oh, this is magic. There's That's five was awesome. clapping. Yeah, you know, hey, guess what? If you want to decorate outside today, here's a look at the decoration forecast for your outdoors uh, decorating. We are going to see increasing humidity today and a high temperature near 74. Winds will gust from the south at about 20 miles per hour. But the most immediate weather hazard out there right now is the fog this morning. You can see very quickly how the fog has just moved into San Antonio just within the last 45 minutes or so. It's 51 degrees out there. Visibility is down to half a mile at the airport, but we do have even more limited visibility down toward Port S.A., Stenson, J JBSA, Randolph, and even Castroville. Visibility less than a quarter of a mile in many of these spots, less than a mile up to New Braunfels as well. And temperatures have actually been on the rise over the last hour. Usually when we see the coolest part of the day, uh, we are actually seeing the temperatures on the rise. Now it's still cool out there. It's 52 in New Braunfels. 53 at JBSA Randolph, 54 at Stinson, and it's 45 in Lotus, 44 in Kerrville, 46 in Bandera, and 43 in Hondo. Here on the satellite, you can see the fog in the low stratus moving into place here just within the last hour or so, especially along and east of 35. But this layer of stratus clouds is starting to push into the northwestern section of Bear County and into the hill country as well. So I think it's going to be a fairly cloudy start for us around around the metro area today, but out toward Del Rio, Yavaldi, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, it should be fairly sunny to begin the day as well, which means those areas out there should have high temperatures a little bit warmer than our forecast high of 74 today. At uh, 10, we'll be seeing still some morning clouds and it'll become partly cloudy around noon, 68 degrees. South winds today at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20, so it will be breezy at times. And when we see the sunset at 537, you'll really notice the humidity out there because temperatures are not going to drop off all that much. In fact, we'll still be in the mid 60s by 10 p.m. and we'll just coast in the low 60s for the remainder of the evening because humidity will be on the rise by tomorrow morning. Dew points will be in the 60s. So what does that mean for us? It means fog tomorrow morning once again, and not only for the metro area, but out to the west toward Del Rio as well. 61 degrees to start the day tomorrow and then throughout the day we will be fairly cloudy. We really won't see much sun tomorrow at all. 76 for the high and then a weak cold front is going to move through right at around 4 or 5 p.m. That's going to bring a small chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm. No significant rain with this front, but it is going to clear out the humidity, keep things fairly cloudy for us in the evening hours and our temperatures will fall into the 50s by midnight tomorrow. Then you can really see we're going to have a, a temperature roller coaster when it comes to the more morning lows uh, tomorrow morning, very mild. And then when that front moves through, temperatures will be falling by Tuesday morning. It'll be a bit frigid. Temperatures will be in the low 40s for the morning low. And then by Thanksgiving, we're going to see an uptick in the humidity. In fact, scattered showers are in the forecast for Thanksgiving itself will only be in the 60s. And then a front is going to move through even cooler on Black Friday with only a chance for isolated rain. So that's a Thanksgiving sneak peek for you. It does look like we need the rain, but it does look like it's going to come on the day that we could do without the rain. Thanksgiving itself, it looks like we're going to have some scattered showers and storms in the area. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 52 degrees out. Coming up next, we have some highlights from high school football. Oh, yeah, Fredericksburg headed to the next round of high school football playoffs. Highlights from their big win. That's after the break. Pick three, three, five, seven, fireball zero, daily four, six, six, three, four, fireball two. Cash five, four, 14, 16, 21, 26. Here we go. Did you play? I didn't. Ah. But Powerball is at 200 million. Or 200, yeah, so I'm going to play Powerball. Okay. Yeah. That's the line, 200 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Mega Millions five, 23, 52, 53, 59. Big number 18. Mega Player five. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We are talking high school football, second round of high school football playoffs continuing. Headed to Jernington, the Fredericksburg Batland Billies taking on Cal Allen in the 4A Division I playoffs. And Billies came to battle. 11-yard line in Cal Allen territory. Play action, slant pass Fredericksburg scoring first. Wouldn't be a high-scoring game, but Fredericksburg coming home with a win, 14-10. to 10. 
All right, here we go. All Saints from Fort Worth trying to end the Central Catholic button season in Belton last night, but that would not happen. Rooting for our neighbors right around the corner. Buttons up 10-7 in the second. Boom, we just saw right there. Quarterback Silas Gomez faked the handoff, fooled the defense, and our photographer too. Gomez let it fly wide open. Jackson decent 40 yard score made it 17 seven Central Catholic. Ah, got to love it. Just keep watching the same score over again. They would end up winning big 38 to 28. All right, those are just a couple of the highlights from last night's playoff games. You can watch all of them. Just head over to KSAT.com. Click on the big game coverage section. We got scores. We got highlights from all the games you need to know. High school uh, volleyball now. Brandeis getting ready to play for the state title this evening. They beat Bridgeland yesterday in the Class 6A state semifinals. Fourth match. Broncos up two sets to one. Tied at 14 all. They pull away for good. Jalen Gibson serves. Nicks the back line for an ace. Carly Ferris finds Emma Halstead for a shot off the block. Up and down. Broncos up 19-14. Halstead's got the hot hand. Drills another spike right down the middle. Brandeis goes on to win three sets to one. Here we go, though. A great season for New Braunfels Canyons volleyball team. They played earlier yesterday afternoon. They fought the Class 5A semifinals, taking on Grapevine. This one went all the way to the fifth set. Canyon keeping pace. Courtney Pope hitting one off the block and down. Tied it up at two. Kyla Malone drilled the shot at the back line, coming up with a big block. But in the end, great line closes. And there we go. Next up, we got football. Here we go. Game we've all been waiting for. 15th ranked UTSA getting ready for the biggest game yet. Roadrunners taking on the defending Conference USA champs, University of Alabama at Birmingham for the Conference West Division title. Game here at home, 2.30. Fill the dome at the Alamo Dome. We're going to have highlights tonight on the night beat. Obviously tomorrow on GMSA. Meet, meet, birds up. Let's go. Hotter than fish grease. Hotter than fish grease. I'm putting on a t-shirt for you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Time now, 654, 52 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, Kyle Rittenhouse found not guilty on all charges after shooting and killing two men and wounding a third during protests in Wisconsin. The jury finding that he acted in self-defense, reactions inside and outside of the courthouse. Rittenhouse's attorney joins us live this morning in our interview with the father of one of the men killed. Plus, the CDC signs off on booster shots for all adults when you can get your follow-up COVID-19 vaccine dose as states across the country see a rise in cases and a football team from a high school for the deaf undefeated their amazing journey as they head to the California championships. It's all ahead here on GMA. Emergency crews are forced to shut down several lanes of traffic on the city's northeast side following an overnight crash. And according to police, alcohol played a factor. That crash happened along I-35 northbound at Judson Road. Now, San Antonio police say that no other vehicles were involved, but it all happened just before one this morning. Police tell us a driver of that vehicle was heading northbound on 35 and Judson when he lost control. The vehicle rolled over several times and eventually landed on a guardrail. Texas was called out to repair several feet of that guardrail, but again, those lanes of traffic had to be closed for some time so first responders could clear up the scene. Now, thankfully, the driver and the passenger inside that vehicle only sustained minor injuries. However, that driver was arrested on scene and is now facing charges of driving while intoxicated. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Look how foggy it is out there Ooh. right now. Yeah, that camera hard to even see any kind of lights there off in the distance and visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in many places. So if you have to be out early this morning, just exercise caution. We will be eventually clearing and seeing partly cloudy skies this afternoon. More morning fog tomorrow, but then a front is going to move through in the afternoon, bringing a small chance for rain and getting that humidity out of there at least for 48 hours. Then by Thanksgiving, it does look like we are going to have some scattered showers in the area. So we've got a lot to detail in the forecast coming Coming up at eight. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah Spivey. Stephen Cavazos will be live at the Botanical Gardens featuring a holiday light show they have, but we will see you at 8 a.m. See you then. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A morning crash on I-35 ends with two people hurt and one person in custody. We have the details and the latest on the investigation. 
And the story this morning oh. is the fog. 8 a.m., 55 degrees. I don't even know what we're looking like, looking out, looking at right now because it is, oh, the south side. Thank oh. you. <laughs> it's the south side. But Sarah Spivey is going to be telling us more about that fog and how long she thinks it might stick around for. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday, November 20. Thank you so much for starting your morning, your weekend with us. We know foggy days like today, it is tough to get out of bed. So sit back, watch the rest of our show. And yeah, Sarah Spivey, go ahead, take it away. Well, yeah, not everybody has the luxury of sitting back <laughs> this morning. In fact, if you have to be out and about this morning, maybe you're traveling or just getting an early start to your Saturday, know that there are areas of fog out there. Let's take a look out with Trans Guide. This is 35 at Cesar Chavez. You can see the fog there off of the distance, 37 at Jones Avenue. Again, uh, visibility in many places is reduced to less than a quarter of a mile. So if you have to be out and about, use those low beams, give yourself a little extra space uh, from the car in front of you. Visibility down to less than a quarter of a mile at Port Asse, down at uh, JBSA Randolph, down to a quarter of a mile at Cincy, down to zero in Pleasanton and in Castroville, down to less than a mile in New Braunfels. Those temperatures are right near the dew points this morning. Temperatures in the 50s, dew points in the 50s, and throughout the day today, we are going to see increasing humidity. Now, we will see sunshine in the afternoon, a high temperature right around 74. Tomorrow morning's low, going to be 62 degrees. Now, again, 62 degrees in the morning hours, it's going to be totally foggy out there tomorrow morning as well. But if you're not a fan of the humidity, the good news is a cold front tomorrow afternoon is going to take that humidity out of here, and we're going to be uh, enjoying a pleasant start to the work week ahead, or for some, not a work week at all because of Thanksgiving on Thursday. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving uh, and what you can expect as far as weather goes. Does look like we might have some rain in the forecast for Thanksgiving. Your forecast in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, one person is in jail after an overnight crash on the city's northeast side. It happened around 1 this morning on I-35 near Judson Road. That's where police say a driver lost control of the vehicle and rolled several times before landing on a guardrail. The two people in the car suffered only minor injuries. No one else was hurt. The driver of the car was arrested for DWI. Also new this morning, cleanup and an investigation now underway in the aftermath of a west side apartment fire. Let's take a look. This happened around at 6 last night on Donaldson Avenue, not too far from Bandera Road. Firefighters on the scene tell us a trash fire in an alley actually spread to a storage unit at the apartment building. Crews were able to knock out the flames quickly. Luckily, no injuries reported. Damages, though, now estimated around $30,000. Investigators right now working to figure out how exactly this started. We are told arson has not yet been ruled out. In your morning headlines, we are seeing fallout in cities around the country in the aftermath of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial verdict in Oregon. The local county sheriff's office there declared a riot in Portland last night that started with a demonstration downtown to the protest of the not guilty verdicts on Twitter. The department says participants have broken windows and damaged doors of the city facilities in New York. A group of protesters rallied last night outside the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Rittenhouse was not found guilty on all charges of the deaths of two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin last year. All right, well, back here at home, the holidays right around the corner. Things are getting, as the kids say nowadays, they're getting lit. You're so cool, Max. So cool. The, the <laughs> coolest. It's getting lit all over San Antonio, especially the San Antonio Botanical Garden Lights Cave, the newest event that gets this illuminates 38 acres. Amazing. And that's where we find Stephen Cavazos. He is live there this morning. Stephen, how many lights are on display? I just got to say, I love the fact that Max says that is what the kids are saying nowadays. I think I'm a little bit older than you, Max, but, you know, we are enjoying our morning here at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Hopefully, we'll be basking in the glow of this a little bit later this evening. It's a little bit too early right now, but with us right now is Sabina Carr, CEO here at the Garden. You know, this is a beautiful exhibit that we're looking at, the lightscape. First time ever being brought here to San Antonio. That's right. Very first time. Uh, it's making its Texas debut. We opened last night to about 2,300 people, which was incredible. So, yeah. Uh, Lightscape is an international sensation. It's just making its debut here in the United States, and it is going to be a one-mile walking trail over 38 acres, and you're going to experience 12 different artistic installations, and that's what makes our show different than anyone else. You know, it's uh, it exactly what it is. It's bringing art and light together. You know, what, what has been the reception that you've been hearing from the public, you know, since they've been out here? We've heard from Mike Osterhage. He loved it. 
He did, yes. Thank you. I, I, saw, I heard that yesterday. Um, you hear lots of words when you're walking through. It's magical, of course, is a big one, and ethereal, and unlike anything I've ever seen. I can't believe they did this. The remarks are truly incredible, and we're very humbled by it. Yeah, what do we want people to know? Because they need to get their tickets right now. It would probably be the best time. Yes, um, definitely go to our website to get your tickets, which is sabot.org. And we really do highly recommend you purchase in advance because we're going to be sold out pretty soon as the holidays really start approaching. It's just easier to do. And one of the things to remember is please wear comfortable shoes because you're going to be walking. I am looking forward to that. I will bring my Christmas sweater as well. So I think it's a perfect time to do that. We're going to be out here at the Botanical Garden coming up throughout the morning. Keep in mind, this does run until January 2nd of next year. We're going to have more coming up later this morning on GMSA. Max, we're back to you. Thank you, Stephen. I, I'm all for it. I love wearing comfortable shoes. Yeah, no, the, we saw some videos and pictures of it in the dark. It is so cool. Yeah, it's not doing it justice right now. No, I'm so excited to check back in with Stephen in just a bit. Time now, 8.06, about 50 degrees out. In the nix of time, a very plump turkey escapes a dinner table at the White House. Still ahead on, ooh, that is a plump one. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll show you the turkey President Biden extended his generosity to. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. The weekend right before Thanksgiving. And take a look. We made two friends this morning. This is peanut butter and jelly. Peanut two butter and jelly time. Two very jubilant turkeys. And they're happy because President Biden just pardoned them. There you go. They get to walk free. You can see peanut butter lifted onto the table. Receive the president's blessing first. And on the ground was jelly also getting a pardon. The birds leave jelly on the ground. will <laughs> retire to their home state of Indiana to live at Purdue University's Animal Sciences Education and Research Farm. Sarah Costa, you had a really good point. Why they have to pardon the plump one? <laughs> that is jelly? <laughs> jelly. Jelly was all jealous. Jelly, jelly. jelly <laughs> is working it. Well, good for you, Jelly. You do you. Uh, absolutely. All right, Sarah Spivey. We talked about uh, sides for Thanksgiving. What is your favorite side? Mm, I love the stuffing that my mom makes. Oh, stuffing is so it's good. Incredible. I'll be making -bum 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 -bum. sweet potato casserole for 50 people for my friends' giving for my church tomorrow Are night. Are two of the people in this room? I think we need to sample it. I could. I'll make little ramekins of okay. it. Oh, I tomorrow. love a good oh, ramekin. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I, I'm doing a twist on that, okay? I'm not going to do the marshmallows on top, I know. Mm. I'm going to do candied pecans and bacon. Ooh. Like Good crunchies. Bourbon sweet potato casserole. Needed the bourbon. Yeah, I guess. Got a spice. <laughs> Chef Spivey. Hey, speaking of Thanksgiving, if you're planning on traveling this weekend, uh, just know that uh, you're going to have very nice weather across the state of Texas today. But tomorrow, there will be a few isolated showers here and there as a cold front moves across uh, the state of Texas. Tomorrow in San Antonio, a small chance for an isolated shower as that front moves through in the afternoon. The better rain chances will be out near Houston and even down south toward Brownsville and Corpus Christi. So the, again, that's tomorrow in the afternoon hours. So if you plan to travel today on the roads, the only thing you'll have to watch out for is the traffic. Uh, but if you're planning on traveling tomorrow, especially east and south, to know that in the later part of the day you could run into a little bit of rain. We're running into some issues right now with fog. Visibility is way down across the metro area. In many areas, less than a quarter of a mile. That includes Port SA, JBSA, Randolph, Stinson. Visibility practically zero in Pleasanton and in Castroville, down to a mile in New Braunfels. And this fog is actually moving to the north and to the west. So we're starting to see reduced visibility in Kerrville as well as Bernie Stage area. Airfield, but we're not going to have the fog all day long. In fact, visibility should improve by the uh, mid morning hours. The reason we're seeing the fog is because humidity has been on the rise. Dew points have gone up some 20 degrees from this time yesterday. This time yesterday morning, it was dry outside. Now you can, of course, see that fog out there. And it is cool out there. 54 in New Braunfels, 53 in San Antonio, 57 in Gonzales, 55 in Pleasanton, 50 in Rock Springs, and 47 in Kerrville. As we just mentioned, humidity is on the rise. And take a look at what happens for the rest of the day today. Dew points rise even more. 
more into the low 60s. That's very muggy for this time of year. But then tomorrow a front will move through as we just mentioned right in the afternoon hours and that's going to take the humidity out with it. It's not going to be a potentially strong front when it comes to temperatures, but it is going to allow for us to be drier as we head into Monday and Tuesday of this upcoming week. So today's forecast calls for cloudy skies through the mid morning. Again, that's when we'll see the fog start to lift and then around noon will be at 68 degrees, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon, 74 for the high temperature and look how mild it's going to be tonight. We're really not going to see temperatures drop off all that much from the afternoon high. That's of course because of the higher humidity. Winds from the south today at 5 to 10 to even 15 miles per hour gusting up to 20 miles per hour and tomorrow Sunday We'll start off with fog and then it'll stay cloudy for most of the day. Just a few peaks of sunshine tomorrow. An isolated shower or storm is possible right at around four when that front moves through and throughout the rest of the evening. Winds will shift from the south to the north at 10 to 20 behind that front, so it will become breezy during the second part of the day. We're not done with cold fronts yet. We're going to be up and down the temperature roller coaster this week. By Wednesday, our highs will be back in the 70s and then on Thanksgiving Day, we're expecting a cold front. That means that we will have areas of scattered showers and storms on Thanksgiving, uh, and some of those rain showers could be on the heavier side as well. Uh, but we do need the rain. It just comes on a day that we could do without it, Thanksgiving Day itself. Then by Black Friday, we should only have isolated showers and storms in the area. So a busy forecast for you, starting with the fog out there right now. It'll be more comfortable tomorrow uh, in the afternoon as that front moves through with a chance for an isolated shower or storm then low humidity Monday and Tuesday highs right around 70 degrees and Wednesday will be muggy again. Same with Thanksgiving Day, but we will have some rain in the area. Scattered showers and storms on Thanksgiving Day, more isolated in nature and cooler on Friday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 815, just about 50 degrees out. Well, good old Texas beef on the grill is on the menu today. Ahead on Texas Eats, we're taking you to a popular barbecue restaurant here in the Alamo City. Yes. All right, coming up, fighting gun violence, unique ways to keep kids safe. We're gonna explain. Welcome back. 2020 was the deadliest year for gun violence in decades. And although the stats are not final for this year, 2021, it looks like things didn't really improve much. As the federal government and states try to figure out how to stop the violent crimes, a group of partners, musicians, singers, songwriters, poets, and dancers are using their talents to try to create positive change by turning their art into activism. And they hope it's a movement that will catch on across the country. Our David Sears has their story. Who's ready? We ready. We ready. We ready. We ready for the start. A powerful message from young people who have grown up seeing their friends, family, and neighbors impacted by violence. We're tired of just seeing the same old, same old, and we want a change to happen. Meet the Story Stitchers, an artist collective that's creating positive change throughout St. Louis. I'm an artist and I wanted to do something about gun violence. Susan Colangelo and eight artists started Story Stitchers in 2013 by stitching panels chronicling the violence in their city. Her passion grew into a larger calling, creating a pathway for young people to break out of the cycle of crime and poverty. We try to change the world through storytelling. Hello everybody, thank you again for tuning in to Stitch Cast. 16 to 24 year olds who live in underinvested neighborhoods hold socially conscious podcasts, create music together. <laughs> hold community dance competitions and work to improve their neighborhoods. Each person who steps out on stage gets paid for their performance. All of a sudden you get $100 for learning how to be a podcaster and you're on Apple Music. The thing I love about Story Stitchers is not only that they provide you with a safe space to learn, create, and excel, but it, it also helps, like you get funded from them too. When they're outside, they all they see is like trash on the ground or um, police cars and they hear the ambulance going by. But in Story Stitchers, all they have to talk about is their emotions and different outlets. You're getting more respect you feel like people are recognizing that you do have important things to say. You do have ideas about what could make your block better. Like, how can you get rid of that empty lot? 
well, we can activate it. Why don't we do a show there? If you can just move them a little bit with strong mentors that are culturally relevant, give them a place where they feel secure, where they have friends, where they feel safe to gather, they'll stick around and they'll change. I see a lot of uh, transformed lives. For people in the community that's watching us grow, it gives them hope. I believe that we're saving lives. I see it change people. I see it change young people. No more violence. Put down the gun. We Turning their art into activism, changing one life at a time. The young people involved with Story Stitchers all have to audition to become part of the group. Many times those auditions are done right on the spot at community gatherings. Story Stitchers brings in professional artists to work with the youth, and although nobody on staff gets paid, it costs about $300,000 a year to finance paying the artists and kids. The money comes from grants and personal donations. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 821, 54 degrees out. Max, you like barbecue, right? I love barbecue. All right, well, this one's just for you. Today, a new episode of Texas Eats at 10 a.m. David Elder takes us inside one of the most popular barbecue spots in the Alamo City. We got a ton of barbecue, side <laughs> items, dessert, beer. Oh, this is a good time. But talk to me about the brisket. What kind of steps go into preparing it? Okay, so for the brisket, we uh, we start in the morning, we trim them up, uh, we season them with uh, salt, pepper, and Jason Dady's Bro Rub. Uh, nice mixture of like 16 different seasonings that we uh, we throw on wow. there. Rub it on real good, throw it on the pit, and let it smoke. But you want to be able to pick it up and then it's holding up on its own weight, but you pull on it and look at that, falls right apart. Pass the brick, the brisket test yeah. is what we like to call it, right? You want to eat your brisket? <laughs> Get another piece for I'm me. I'm not going to slow down. Yeah, you're this not stuff's gonna... good. You can't stop me. Here you go. Cheers mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's a nice bite, man. Thank you. Give me some love. The smoke ring on the outside of the brisket is really nice and it gives you that subtle smoke flavor that you want. It has a nice bark on the outside, nice and tender. Pass the brisket test, you pull on it, came right apart. All right, so we were just discussing sides. We were Barbecue pseudo ranking sides. them. We and both agreed potato salad is number one. But you came out of the woodwork with just like a mind blowing carbs idea. Carbs on carbs, potato salad, get potato chips, mm -hmm. dip it. Game Just. changer. The little barbecue sandwich. I'm not messing around, Max. You know, there's breaking news. David Elder, coming to the show today. Excited about that. All right, time now, just about 827, 54 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, it's a big week in Washington. We'll have the latest on President Biden's Build Back Better bill and what's coming next. Get ready to bask in the glow here at the San Antonio Botanical Garden this holiday season. We're live here coming up with a look at Lightscape. That is so cool. He's basking. I <laughs> love that. Good morning. It is 830 this morning, Saturday, November 20th. Thank you so much for joining us. As we just saw, Steven Cavazzo is out showing off some of our beautiful San Antonio lights. And there is so much going on in and around our community. And one of the best things about San Antonio, yeah. the weather. The weather, it, it, it's... Today, it's not really playing that nice, Sarah. I'll admit it. It's kind of gross outside. It's kind of <laughs> yucky out there. All right. We do have some fog out there this morning. Temperatures are cool in the 50s, though, so at least it's not that summertime icky, sticky fog that we get. Let's take a look at Transky real quick because you can see that the problems on the roads really are, are the fog out there right now. Visibility is way down. You can see off in the distance there that's 90 at Nogalitos, and we'll do one more here, 281 at St. Mary's. Now, I am seeing some improvement to the visibility out there. We still are looking, though, at visibility less than a quarter of a mile at JBSA Randolph, less than a quarter of a mile at Port SA, close to zero in Castroville and in in Pleasanton and visibility is starting to go down up in Kerrville now visibility down to five miles down to less than one in New Braunfels a wider view though we're really only seeing the fog centered around uh, I 35 and into parts of Atascosa and Wilson counties as well at the moment no fog for 
Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Rock Springs. But those clouds this morning around the Alamo City are going to stick around through the later mid morning hours. 58 at 10, 68 at noon. Increasing humidity throughout the day, but we will see plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. 74 for the high temperature. South winds today at 10 to 15, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. If you think it's muggy right now, just wait until tomorrow. We do have a front on the way, though, that will make it feel a lot more comfortable as we start Thanksgiving week in just a few days. I'll have a look ahead at the forecast in a few minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Some top stories this morning. A man accused of setting a house on fire is now facing charges. That's according to an arrest affidavit. 19 year old Zachary Hughes set fire to a home earlier this week in the 800 block of Broadview Drive. That's near Culebra in Loop 410. Investigators say he bragged about setting fire to the home in a series of videos that were sent to the victims. Hughes was arrested yesterday. He is facing charges for arson and threat of a family. Well, a routine traffic stop leads to a massive drug bust. 34 year old Alessandro Martinez arrested near Loop 410 and Culebra Road yesterday after Bear County Sheriff's deputies seized $320,000 worth of meth from inside his vehicle. Martinez now facing a number of charges, including possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. A prominent San Antonio pastor now distancing himself from a controversial political conference that took place at his family's church last weekend. Matt Hagee, executive pastor of Cornerstone Church, said in a statement that, quote, it was not appropriate to host the Reawaken America conference where far right political activists promoted conspiracy theories about the 2020 election and led chance in an anti Joe Biden euphemism. Well, the Supreme Court could rule as soon as Monday on Texas's ban on abortion after roughly six weeks. The Supreme Court said on its website Friday that the justices are planning to issue at least one opinion on Monday. Now, there's no guarantee the two cases over the Texas law will be resolved then, but the court put the Texas cases on a rarely used fast track mechanism. And this may be the last chance to decide the Texas case before the justices hear arguments on December 1st in another abortion case. One pilot, one pilot is dead and two others are hurt. Uh, one pilot dead, two others hurt after planes crashed Friday morning on a runway at Laughlin Air Force Base. Now that's just east of Del Rio. According to a press release, the accident happened around 10 a.m. yesterday. Now it is home to the 47th training wing, which is the country's largest pilot training facility for the Air Force. Reports say a critically injured pilot was transported to Bamsey here in San Antonio. Now to the big week in Washington, President Joe Biden's Build Back Better bill passing the House. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has the details this morning. It's actually President Biden's 79th birthday today. He's the oldest serving American president. And yes, yesterday he got his first formal physical since taking office. Unlike the Trump White House, the president's team did release a quite thorough health summary after the president's doctor's visit. The president's physician said that he was healthy, vigorous and fit to successfully execute the duties of his office. The physician did say that they looked into the president's gait, his walk uh, that's been more strained lately. They said they ruled out any neurological issues maybe causing that and that they also looked into the fact that he seems to be clearing his throat a lot lately when he's talking. But probably the most interesting part of the day was that while the president was under anesthesia, uh, anesthesia for his colonoscopy, Vice President Kamala Harris, she assumed the responsibilities of acting commander in chief. So a little bit of history there, Mona. She's obviously the first woman to take on that role. A historic moment indeed, Mary Alice. And what's the reaction to the big vote on the spending bill in the House? Yeah, Democrats were all smiles yesterday after the House passed that Build Back Better bill. But obviously, this is just the first step. The big question, the big hurdle for the president will still be if he can get all 50 Democratic senators on board. This bill would provide hundreds of billions of dollars for fighting climate change, providing for housing, universal pre-K. Democrats did get a little bit of a win this week. The Congressional Budget Office said that the bill is, in fact, almost fully paid for with new taxes and revenues. But a big question still around paid maternity leave. The House version of the bill did include that proposal, which would be historic. The country has never had a paid maternity leave program, but it is just not clear if the holdouts in the Senate will go along with that. The White House says the president will keep pushing. That was Mary Alice Parks reporting. Not El Paso, where an armed robbery ends in a shooting last night at the airport. Obviously, this is happening right at the start of the busy holiday travel weekend. Police have confirmed the robbery victim was shot. 
They didn't release the victim's condition just yet. Dispatchers did say no one was taken to the hospital from the scene. Usually that is a sign that the shooting was deadly. A source from the El Paso airport telling a local El Paso news station that the person who died was an airline employee. Officials have not yet confirmed that information still very limited right now, but we are expecting more info as the morning goes on. Well, back here at home, shine bright this holiday season at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Shine bright like a diamond. We're talking about the Lightscape Show and its dazzling guest with a display of illuminated acres. <laughs> that is right. Stephen Cabazzo has joined us live there this morning where things are getting festive. Stephen, good morning. Good morning. You guys are just a pleasure this morning. I love working on the weekends. I really don't want to tell you that. I really want to tell you it feels like we're playing some neon guitar over here. Uh, check this out. We're wrapped in it, actually. It almost feels like we're in a nightclub, but it's during the day. Check, check it out. Photog extraordinaire Steve and Chavez showing you what we're looking at this morning. Now, this is all part of Lightscape, the first time ever brought here to the San Antonio Botanical Garden. With us again is Sabina Carr, CEO here. Tell us a little bit about this particular exhibit. So you just said it's neon strings, and it's probably probably miles of strings that are wrapped around and it's kind of an illusionary effect. So the white lights turn everything into neon. So if you remember in your 20s when you used to go to the nightclub and wear the white shirt and your teeth were, it's kind of that feeling when you're in here. To me, it's like lasers, you know, pointing up to the sky. It's amazing. I love that. You don't need to go to the club to get the club feeling. That's Just come right. to the San Antonio Botanical <laughs> Garden. Uh, you know, this is not the only exhibit. There are about 12. Tell us a little bit more about what people can really expect when they come out here. Well, I'd love to tell you about two because one is a world premiere and it's Blue Bonnets and only in Texas, right? And so we have George Strait singing a really wonderful Christmas song to the field of 2,500 blue bonnets. So that is really unique. And we also have around our East Texas Lake, which is truly amazing, a laser light show. It's an orchestral laser light show. So it's soft and beautiful and just incredible. You were just telling me this, this is all about making memories. So we really want people to know where can they go to buy those tickets? And they got to do it fast. Got to do it fast. Go to our website, sabot.org, and go ahead and buy your tickets there. They're all time tickets. It's really easy to do. And I believe we do have a link posted on our website at ksat.com. We're going to have more to show you, including some treats that you're not going to want to miss out on when you make a visit over here to the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. Back to you guys. Thank you, Stephen. I love how she's like, remember in your 20s when you go to nightclubs? No. No. I mean, come on, people. Guy. People go to nightclubs people in their do 30s, nightclubs. 40s, yeah. 50s. There you go. I'm not one of them, but okay. Okay, 839, <laughs> 55 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. It's a special day today for America's young people. Oh. We'll have the details next. And here we there go. There Oh, that was, that was last night. So the outdoor ice rink, it has returned to Travis Park after a hiatus. We're going to explain what you need to know to hit the rink. I love that you're ice skating in a suit, Max. That's just so Max Max. So right I there. emceed the event, and then we did live shots, and I saw other reporters out there doing live shots on skates, and I had to, you know, accept the challenge. Good for you. All right. This is also challenging weather this morning with that fog hanging around. Sarah Spivey will let us know when she thinks it might go away when we come back. Well, today is November 20th, which is also known as National Child's Day. Every year, the country's children and their dreams and ambitions are celebrated for, and adults look for ways they can help them make, a, make it a reality. The observance is a brainchild of a retired school counselor who got a one-time proclamation signed by President George W. Bush back in 2001. National Child's Day turned into an annual observance in the years following. All right, so it is back. The ice rink at Travis Park, it is so amazing. If you get out there, there's music, there's lights. It is so cool. Starting to feel and look like Christmas. Downtown San Antonio still a few weeks away from December, but you can head to the ice rink pretty much every night until January. If you have any questions, any concerns, want to get tickets, just head to KSAT.com. We have all the information. That is Brandon Logan. He actually helped create the ice rink, and they were talking about you know, basically the resilience of the city, reintroducing people to downtown San Antonio, not only what this ice rink means for our community, for local businesses, but just what it means for the downtown area. And Max Massey skating in a suit. Mm -hmm. What wow. a champ. And hey, so you grew up on the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Did you play hockey? Movies? No, I you played didn't? basketball. But you, you grew up ice skating, though. No. You didn't? No, it was like Not a challenge. The yeah, I no, thought, no, no, no. I thought, I thought we had talked about that you played hockey. <laughs> it, was street, it was street hockey. That's, no. that's not on skates. Okay. Wrong person then. <laughs>
Anyway, uh, it was beautiful last night, and it was funny, Sarah Spivey, because it was like 68 and sunny when the event first started, and I was like, is this ice going to melt? But it ended up getting gorgeous out there. Perfect temps. Nice and cool quickly last night for us, but, you know, humidity is back in a big way, and you can see it out there in the form of fog. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Uh, but the good news is that fog is starting to lift. Uh, now, earlier, this view was way, way up. Uh, foggier. We couldn't even see the Whataburger there down at the, the bottom of the screen. So we are seeing improvements when it comes to the visibility, uh, but it's still a challenge out there some in some places visibility less than a quarter of a mile. It's 53 degrees outside. Winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour. You can see here that visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, down to less than a quarter of a mile at Port SA, JBSA Randolph, Castroville, and visibility close to zero down in Pleasanton. Temperatures are on the cooler side, although they are on the rise. It's 53 degrees, as I mentioned, in San Antonio, 55 in New Braunfels, already near Near 60 degrees at Stinson, and it's still in the 40s up in parts of the Hill Country. 46 in Comfort, 50 in Lost Maples, and 51 in Bandera. Here you can see the fog through looking at the visible satellite imagery. There's actually some sunshine out near Seguin right now, but uh, most of uh, San Antonio and Bear County is under a blanket of fog or low clouds at the moment. A wider view here, we've got another level of low clouds moving in, so these clouds are going to be fairly stubborn. I think they're going to stick around until at least lunch and then we'll be able to see clearing skies. Speaking of clear skies, totally clear in Del Rio and in Eagle Pass. It's drier out there too. Dew points are only in the 40s, but dew points are on the rise currently in the 50s. Uh, and looking at the dew point forecast, we'll actually see by tonight and into early tomorrow morning dew points in the low 60s. That's fairly muggy for this time of year. So what does that mean for our forecast today? Well, we'll have morning clouds until, as I mentioned, right around noon and then we'll start to see skies clear 74 for the afternoon high, so not too warm. South winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 20 and then when the sun sets tonight, we're not going to see a cool drop off in temperatures like what we saw last night. In fact, we'll still be in the 60s by 10 PM and we'll be in the 60s through early tomorrow. This is look at tomorrow morning. All of us starting off with clouds and most of us starting off with fog tomorrow morning. Then we'll be looking at a fairly cloudy day. It's going to be hard for to see much sunshine, but in the afternoon, a few peaks of sunshine, then a front is going to move through. This front will carry with it a small chance, 20% for an isolated shower, uh, but we're really not going to be seeing much rain from that front at all. And only a small temperature drop too. temperatures will be back in the 50s by midnight into early Monday morning. It's really the morning lows Monday and Thursday that Tuesday rather that'll feel chilly temperatures in the 40s and 50s. And then by Thanksgiving, we're going to see an increase in the humidity again. And speaking of Thanksgiving, it does look like we are going to have scattered thunder showers uh, on Thursday itself. Fairly cloudy skies, highs only in the 60s, and then a front will move through, making it cool on Friday for Black Friday as well. So taking a look at the planning forecast, it's going to be uh, fairly uh, chilly by the start of Monday and Tuesday, but until then, a very mild forecast for us, then low humidity behind that front tomorrow, and then scattered showers and storms in the forecast on Thursday. We'll continue to keep you updated during this busy holiday week on air, online, and my favorite app in the whole wide world. I'm not even joking, the KSAT Weather Authority app. <laughs> I like that app too, Sarah. We can Spivey. go live right to your phone, so we like that app. Thank you, Sarah. 848, 56 degrees up. Still ahead on GMSA, go Roadrunners! Oh my goodness, I actually just tweeted the Frost Tower lit up because of UTSA. What, what? Putting the perfect season on the line today at the Alamo Dome. Fill the dome. We have a full preview of the game coming up. All right, the story this morning has Ooh. been fog, and you can see it on your screen at I-35 and Topperwine. I-35 at St. Mary is looking a little better out there. Sarah Spivey's been talking about this fog all morning. She hopes it will dissipate soon. Just stay with us on air and online, and we'll keep you updated. And on the app. All right, here we go. One of the biggest games of the day, the biggest San Antonio game, that's for sure. 15th ranked UTSA getting ready for their biggest game, possibly in school history. The Roadrunners facing the defending Conference USA champs, University of Alabama at Birmingham for the Conference West Division title. Today, 2.30 at the Alamo Dome here at home. you got to fill the dome. We're obviously going to have all the highlights, the sound, 
post game on the night beat, and of course, tomorrow right here on GMSA. This is it. High school football playoffs. Steel Knights putting their undefeated record on the line, taking on Vandergrift Vipers from the Austin area. Second round of 6A playoffs. This would be a long night for Steel. Taking the second quarter, Vipers leading 7 0. Poised to straight again. Quarterback Braden Cannon fakes the handoff. Rocket to Grayland Spring. 13 yard touchdown. 14 0 Vipers. Still in the second quarter, Vipers on the move again. Buchanan drops the snap, picks it up, avoids the rush. Ryan Shepard right in stride, strides into the end zone. 21 yards score, 21 0. Still second quarter, 30 seconds ago. Vipers on the one yard line. Buchanan drops the snap again, this time scoop and score. Vandergriff scored three touchdowns in the second quarter to take a 28 0 lead into halftime. Whew, this is the final. Austin Vandergriff, 38, steal, zero. Another local team to talk about, Alamo Heights Mules, one of only three teams in 12's top 12, still undefeated going into last night's second round of the playoffs. One and all that, Mules taking the opening kickoff, and Bennett fakes the reverse handoff, finds the seam, cuts up the field, flying down the field. Looks like he's going to score, but he is dragged out of the eight-yard line. Mules stay on the ground. Quarterback James Sobey keeps it on the option read, cuts through the defense. Five-yard score, 7-0 Alamo Heights. Let's see the final from this one. Ooh, Alamo Heights putting on a show, 55 to 28. Those are just a couple of the highlights from last night's playoff games. We have all of what you need to know. Said so ksat.com. Click on the big game coverage section. See scores, highlights, some other big games from last night. So there we go, 2:30. Back to college football. 2:30. Fill the dome. Fill the dome. Frost Tower clearly supporting. Blue and orange. We're good to go. Meet me. Meet me. Birds up. 854, <laughs> 55 degrees out. Well, after the break, we're talking about tonight's Light the Way celebration at UIW. Go ahead and stay with us. Well, the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival is an incarnate word. It's back in person. The gates open at 3 p.m. with the lighting ceremony at 6 p.m. and fireworks are at 9.30 p.m. Our very own Steve Spreester will be emceeing the event. If you can't make it tonight, the lights will be on from dusk to dawn every day at the university through January 6th. Beautiful. If you can't make it today, try to take the family and go for a good walk through UIW's beautiful campus sometime the next month. Time now, 8.57, 55 degrees out. We've got a lot coming up on GMSA at 9, including, I love this, a story of a high school football team for the deaf. Just one win away from the California State Championship. We'll show you how they got the big game. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 9 o'clock this Saturday, November 20th. Thank you so much for joining us. Starting your weekend with us, you just had a little three-day weekend. What'd you do? I did. Um, my mom's in town. My mom's nice. watching. Hi, Patty. Hi, Patty. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> we drove to Houston yesterday, and the traffic for holiday traffic, Ooh. Sarah Spivey, it was insane. On I-10, going there, and then also coming back, we had using the app ways going all these back roads because there's accidents, <laughs> construction. But well, obviously yeah. construction and then a busy travel weekend too with Thanksgiving later on this upcoming week. And we've got a, some problems out there on the roads right now, mainly in the form of fog. This is 37 at Goliad and you can see that fog there uh, mainly off in the horizon. But visibility is improving around San Antonio. At one point, visibility was less than a quarter of a mile at the airport and now now we are seeing improvement to about six mile visibility. Still low visibility out in JBSA Randolph down to a quarter of a mile, a mile and a quarter visibility in New Braunfels and practically zero visibility in Castroville, down to half a mile visibility in Pleasanton as well. We're speaking about traveling. If you have to get on the roads this weekend to get to where you're going to go, just know that there should not be that many weather problems out there today. In fact, it should be nice and quiet all across the state of Texas, 74 degrees in El Paso, 80 degrees in Brownsville, Houston area 75, 74 up in Dallas. Now tomorrow there will be a little bit of a disturbance. A cold front is going to be moving across the state of Texas. Now it's really only going to be producing rain for areas like Houston, Corpus Christi and somewhat on the valley as well. But uh, here in San Antonio, 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm as that front moves through on Sunday. Until then, you'll notice the increasing humidity today. First outside right now, we've got the fog, but later 
on tonight, it's not going to be cool at all. It's going to be mild and muggy later on this evening, and we'll be waking up at 62 tomorrow for your Sunday with some more fog and a small chance for an isolated shower storm as that front moves through. We'll talk about how much that front will cool us down and what we can expect for Thanksgiving coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one person in custody, two others injured after an overnight crash on the northeast side of town. This is what we know right now. It happened around one this morning on the northbound lanes of I-35 near Judson. That's where police say a driver lost control of their vehicle, rolled several times before landing on a guardrail. Two people in the vehicle suffered only minor injuries. Luckily, no one else injured. The driver of that vehicle arrested could be facing charges for DWI. In your morning headlines, an armed robbery led to a possible deadly shooting last night at the El Paso International Airport right at the start of the busy holiday travel weekend. Police have confirmed the robbery victim was shot, but they didn't say what his condition was. Dispatchers said no one was taken to the hospital from the scene, which is a sign the shooting possibly was deadly. A source from the airport told a local El Paso news station that the person that died that may have died was an airline employee, but officials have not confirmed that information is very limited right now. Officials are planning to provide more information later this morning. Over the moment, a big win for the Biden administration regarding President Joe Biden's roughly $1.9 trillion social safety spending package, but getting it through the Senate is a much tougher task. So yesterday, House Democrats passed the president's ambitious economic and climate agenda. Everything from universal pre-K to pay leave to home health care, so much more. It's all in the House package, but Republicans are blasting the bill. It is expected to undergo major changes in the Senate to try to get at least 50 senators on board. The president uh, is absolutely committed, of course, to getting this through the Senate, signing it into law and ensuring these impacts, these cost cutting measures uh, are uh, put in place into law as soon as possible. Paid family leave, which is a top White House priority, is now likely to be on the chopping block. Today is another opportunity to get your COVID-19 vaccine for you and your child. Metro Health will be hosting a pop up clinic today from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Realty One Group Emerald on Gom Road. That's on the far northwest side outside of Loop 1604. The Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson and Johnson vaccines will be available as well as the flu shots. They will also offer the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. All right, so through the morning, we have been tossing it to Stephen Cavazos at 830. You said shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Someone took your words, posted it on our Instagram. Oh, look at our viewers. I know. Look at that. And we are talking about shining bright this morning because amazing holiday lights all over San Antonio, specifically the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Well, our other person that's shining bright, Stephen Cavazos, <laughs> joins us oh, live at the newest holiday stop. attraction. Look at Stephen. How's it twinkling <laughs> over there? <laughs> I love that, Sarah. Uh, you know, we're leaving the club behind us. Our club days are over. And if you're with us, uh, we are now here at the Fire Garden. This is the signature exhibit here for the Lightscape. Now, uh, with us again is Sabina Carr. We are talking about this beautiful uh, attraction for the San Antonio, for the Alamo City. Tell us a little bit about what this is, uh, why this is so special. So Fire Garden is a signature for Lightscape around the world. And what is so great about San Antonio is we've got two unique views. It goes over water for the first time in the world and you get to see it from above and below because there's a bridge walkway that you'll go on the trail so it's really exciting and fire is the most original form of light so we came out of the modern form of the neon and into the fire i feel like this is a reflection of my 30s and i love this so much uh, the great thing is too is that uh, this is also an opportunity people can enjoy some good food some s'mores uh-huh oh yeah, yeah we've got s'more pits right by the fire garden of course which is perfect we also have tamales and frito pie and we've got some apple ham pie and some boozy Hot chocolate uh, and cocktails, of course, because you have to. <laughs> I only do boozy, so let's do that. You know, I love that. It's going to be great uh, for anybody to come out and get your tickets now. We're going to have more with the San Antonio Botanical Garden coming up in the next few minutes. Back to you guys. I do. <laughs> I love Stephen. He's best. Great live shot out there. Thank you, Stephen. Time now, 906, 55 degrees out. Well, hopefully you've uh, had breakfast by now because David Elder will make your mouth water and stomach rumble. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll get a preview of today's episode of Texas Eve. And David, uh, he'll be joining us later at the end of the show. Oh, uh, look at that. All right, here we go. Sarah, this is your story. 
Yes, uh, that shot right there I waited a very long time for. I'm going to be talking about my personal experience of the very first time I have raised monarchs and protected them. And we also talked to a local elementary school that's doing the same. That's coming up in just a bit. Yeah, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Okay, starting to get clear skies, 55 degrees. Now we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. As thousands of monarch butterflies move their way through San Antonio on their way to Mexico for the winter, you may have found monarch caterpillars in your garden as a result of the females laying their eggs. So I actually found some monarch caterpillars in my garden, so mm -hmm. I decided to document my very first time raising and protecting them, so I also visited a local elementary school that's doing the same. I had been waiting for this moment for several weeks. When I knew it was close to happening, I spent all day checking my monarch butterfly enclosure and setting up my camera to make sure I didn't miss it. And that Nat Geo patience paid off. It felt like a mission accomplished. I had saved at least one of the many monarch caterpillars turned chrysalis to its final stage. But let me take you to where this organic journey all started. When I was planting milkweed in my garden in September, before I could even plant it, a monarch flew inches from my face and began laying her eggs on the milkweed leaves over and over. I watched in awe and let her do her thing. But when she left, I felt responsible to see it through that her offspring lived, knowing that monarch butterflies are a backbone pollinator to our ecosystem and food cycle. And I'm not the only one who feels compelled to protect and raise monarchs. Isabella Naya is a fifth grade teacher at NISD's Kuntz Elementary. For 12 years, she's been protecting and raising monarchs in the school's pollinator garden that she started with her after school program, Eco Friends. We're starting to also see a decline in monarchs, and that has to do with the fact of there's climate change and the fact that, you know, humans have a huge impact on that as well. It's why I kept checking my milkweed and eventually found those eggs had grown into some very hungry caterpillars. I sought advice from experts at the Texas Butterfly Festival who told me it would be best to protect the caterpillars from predators with netting. I also cut up butternut squash for them to eat when they finish the milkweed. Then one by one, about 20 chrysalis formed. We had a storm one night and I found several of them fell, which could result in them not surviving. I researched how to safely rehang them with dental floss. I had never seen a chrysalis in person or had been able to watch that transformation from Jolly Rancher green with golden lines to transparent. It made me feel like a fifth grader with innocent excitement, much like Anaya students do. It's actually kind of beautiful the way, like when a monarch's in its uh, chrysalis, it turns clear and it could, you could see it's transparent. You could see the, um, the monarch's colors and it's gorgeous. When I'm in the garden because it makes me feel so calm and relaxing. And um, it, gives, it gives us a break, a break from our devices. So I really enjoyed this little journey that I went on and I just wanted to update. Hi. Hi. Well, there it is. Hi. Um, so fast forward today. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I released another monarch. Wow. Um, another one emerged last another night. One. So it was a little, I had almost about 20. Yeah. I had 20 chrysalis awesome. form. And I think I have about four or five more left. So we'll see. It's been, it's been fun. Every morning I'm like, oh, there's another one. And, and I, a little behind the one. scenes, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, Sarah was like, Oh no, I think they're all dead. <laughs> I don't think I did a good job. I, I thought I failed so the monarch <laughs> mommy. <laughs> it's just patience and letting nature do its thing. Yeah. With a little bit of dental floss as an assistant. So that yeah. was good. way to go, Sarah. Thank you. Really we had we you. had some weather that actually. <laughs> yeah. And I think maybe that's why they stayed in their chrysalis longer because we had that cold snap. It just yeah. came in and they weren't, I don't think they were expecting that. We did. Uh, but you know what? We're starting to see the fog clear around San Antonio. Take a look at this image outside right now. It wasn't too long ago that we couldn't see the Whataburger in the front of your screen there, and we certainly couldn't see off the distance or any sunshine there, but we're seeing improvement here. There's still fog in some of the valleys and low-lying areas around San Antonio. Visibility less than half a mile at JBSA Randolph. Improving visibility at Port Sade up to a mile and a half now, up to two and a half mile visibility in New Braunfels 
levels and up to six mile visibility here at the airport. And you can actually kind of see that right after in the distance. It's about six miles there that we start to see a little bit of fog. Now, humidity has been on the rise in just the past 24 hours. We've seen dew points go up by 20 to 25 degrees since this time yesterday. Now you can see it out there in the form of the fog, but by this evening, you'll really be able to feel the humidity out there too, because temperatures are not going to drop off as much as they did last night. Outside right now, speaking of temperatures, it's already 60 degrees in Gonzales, 54 in Uvalde, 59 in Del Rio, 52 in Kerrville, and 57 in Rock Springs, already 62 degrees in Beeville. Take a look at the visible satellite. We've got total sunshine out near Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, but those clouds are, are around San Antonio. We've got another layer of low level clouds pushing in as well. So I think we're going to stay mostly cloudy until about lunch around the Alamo City, and then we'll be able to look at partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. So still plenty of sunshine for a good portion of the day today. And as I mentioned, humidity is on the rise. Dew points right now in the 50s, but watch what happens. Dew points surge into the low 60s by the start of the day tomorrow. We are going to have fog tomorrow morning, and then a front is going to move through tomorrow before it can get too humid and bring out the humidity and allow for it to feel really nice outside uh, after that front moves through tomorrow night. So today's forecast calls for gradually clearing skies, partly cloudy in the afternoon, 74 for the high, south winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. Look how mild it's going to be tonight. We're only going to be in the mid to low to mid 60s for most of the evening because of the higher humidity. And we'll see fog early tomorrow morning, 61 degrees to start the day. We'll be cloudy and 71 at noon. Hard to see much sunshine tomorrow uh, with the increase in the humidity. That front is going to move through close to about four to five, bringing us a small chance for an isolated shower or storm and sweeping away that humidity. Winds will turn to the north at 10 to 20, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Then it will warm up by Wednesday. We'll be near in the 70s and then another front is expected to arrive, but this one is actually going to come on Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving, we're expecting to see a few scattered showers and potentially scattered thunderstorms as well. It's too early to nail down exact specifics, but we do know that it looks like Thursday is going to be cloudy and rainy at times uh, with that front moving through and allowing for a, a nicer Black Friday temperatures will be uh, in the 60s. Take a look at the forecast uh, kind of again all up and down. We'll have more humidity tomorrow before that front moves through than low humidity Monday and Tuesday with chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. More humid Wednesday and then scattered showers in the forecast on Thanksgiving itself. So you may not be able to throw the football around with the family, but you can at least pretend it's really cool outside with the gray skies and the rain outside on, on Thanksgiving itself. Thank you, Sarah. And my mom just texted me. Mm. Um, I have another butterfly this morning. Oh, oh congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> so. Mother of 15. Mother of 15. Another one. <laughs> 917, 56 degrees out. Coming up next, Meta making some user-friendly oh. changes to Facebook, how they're planning on giving users more control. Good morning and welcome back. Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook, says it will test ways to help users see more of what they want and less of what they don't. It says users will be able to customize their news feeds, control the amount of content they want to get from friends, families, and other groups. Now, other changes will be made to control life favorites, snooze, and unfollow easier to use. Now, changes will be made to advertising as well. The social media giant says it will begin testing in countries around the world soon and to kick off next year. Time now, 921, 56 degrees out. You hungry, Max? Always, always. All right, well, David Elder takes us inside a new Chicago restaurant here in mm. San Antonio, offering bites of the Windy City. Love it. But first, time to take a look at those birthdays. First up, we have Ruby, nine years old on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Ruby. And this is Alfredo, 90 Aww. years young. Happy birthday, Alfredo. Keep posting those pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. Happy birthday to everyone. Why Chicago food? Well, I got tired of eating tacos. <laughs> We chose some of our favorites from home. And of course, the wings with the mouth sauce. Like, 
that's like to die for. And you know, catfish at home is, is the ultimate favorite. Look at this, the batter on the outside, I mean, super crunchy, you could tell, and it's got a nice body to it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Nice, white, and flaky on the inside, yeah. exactly how you want the catfish to be. This catfish is super crunchy. It's seasoned to perfection on the outside. On the inside, it's so flaky and tender. I mean, this is incredible stuff. I've had catfish at Southern restaurants, never at a Chicago restaurant, but I gotta tell you, I'm coming back for it. I think this is the best catfish I've ever had. I'm serious right now. <laughs> I'm you. going for another bite. That is really, really good catfish. So. Is he bringing catfish today? I hope so. Well, well, we'll have to see. Yeah, 9.50, Stay he'll be tuned. Here. Alex, our producer, just had a great line. Okay, now I'm officially hungry. Me too! All right, so if you started your holiday shopping, you may be looking for these toys for your kids ahead on GMSA. We'll tell you why many parents are having such a hard time Ooh. getting their hands on them. And the heartwarming story about a football team from a high school for the deaf. They're headed to the California State Championship game. We're gonna explain how they got there. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. Just about 9.30 this morning, November 20th. Thanksgiving right around the corner. What do you planned? Well, I'm gonna go home mm -hmm. to Corpus Christi for Thanksgiving. My mom will be cooking. I don't really cook. You smile because she's watching? Yeah, I'm like, mom, you'll be cooking. Thanks for cooking, mom. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me yesterday, she's like, okay, so, you know, what, what should I make? Or mm -hmm. she was telling me like the thing she was making, but she didn't say macaroni and cheese. Whoa. And I said, mom, we need that homemade mac and cheese. There's mm -hmm. like five sticks of butter in it. Love it. You need it. It's really good. Uh, I don't need the calories, but. <laughs> Sarah Spivey, you're already preparing too. You got a big meal plan tonight, right? Uh, tomorrow night, mm. we're, my, my church is doing a friend's giving. Okay? Nice. I'm in charge of making sweet potato casserole. Ooh for a lot of people. Tell them what you put in it. The crunchies. Oh, okay. So I'm not gonna do a traditional sweet potato casserole. I don't love traditional sweet potato casserole, but I'm gonna do a bourbon sweet potato casserole with pecan, praline, and bacon on top. So okay. we'll see how that turns out. I'm excited about it. I'll cook it today and, and reheat it tomorrow. All right, in the pollen count today, we've got molds. There are present, but they're the only allergen present and they're low. So that's some good news there. We have seen the uh, fog slowly start to lift around San Antonio. Earlier, visibility just about everywhere around the metro area was less than a quarter of a mile. But as you can see, great improvements here right now. Uh, visibility still less than two miles near JBSA Randolph, but elsewhere things are improving for us. It's Saturday. It's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Maybe you're trying to get those Christmas decorations up before the family comes over. Know that if you do have outdoor decorating plans today, it should be nice outside, a little bit muggy, especially by the later half of the day. Uh, but dew points are going to be on the rise as well as temperatures. We should be near 74 for the afternoon high. A bit of a breeze there today. South winds 10 to 20, gusting up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour. And we do have a, f a front in the forecast starting tomorrow. So we'll have a look ahead and talk about the rest of the weekend and of course Thanksgiving as well in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man accused of setting a house on fire is facing charges. According to an arrest affidavit, 19 year old Zachary Hughes set fire to a home earlier this week on Broadview Drive. That's near Culebra Road and Loop 410. Investigators say he bragged about setting fire to the home in a series of videos that were sent to the victims. Hughes was arrested yesterday. He is facing charges for arson and threat of a family. A new government research shows Americans died of drug overdoses in record numbers across the country in the 12 month period that ended in April. More than 100,000 Americans died of ODs. That's up almost 30% from the year before. We know drugs are a big problem in and around our community. That is why tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar joining us live to talk about recent crime trends, recent investigations, and what to be out on the lookout for. So if you have any questions you would like to ask the sheriff, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow, 8 a.m. Here are all the answers. Morning headlines, a feel-good story for you. A football team from high school for the deaf headed to the California State Championships after winning a huge game overnight. I love this story so much. ABC's Janae Norman shows us how these players are proving that being deaf is not a disadvantage on the gridiron. 
that winning moment for the Cubs overnight as they won the division championship. Screaming fans cheering for the undefeated team, but most of the players that worked tirelessly to win couldn't hear them. Every member of the California School for the Deaf Riverside's football team is hard of hearing or deaf. We can do anything. Deaf people can do anything. We're not this stereotype that's out there. They're the only all deaf public high school team in Southern California and sign the plays to each other without the other team understanding. Their coach also using sign language from the sidelines. We've got so many good players, honestly. Uh, not just players, but we got great students too. They're great kids. You know, whatever I say, they're doing it. It makes coaching so easy for me. It's just been amazing. It really has. This school has never had a winning season, sometimes going whole seasons without a win. The world looks at CSDR like, oh, they stink. Their program's awful. You know, oh, they, they've never had a good season. Here we are. Okay, that's fired us up. And now we're destroying every game. We're showing the world we can play. Action speaking loudest overnight. The team celebrating their win as they get ready to head to state. Next week, expecting to prove once again that being deaf is not a weakness. We're not done. One more game. We're looking for that ring. One more game. This is history for us. We have one more. We're not done. We have unfinished business. Championships on the way. That was Janae Norman reporting. I'm pretty pumped up. I'm excited. I First love off, that story so much. Those highlights were impressive. Nice screen pass right into the end zone. Bullet to the corner of the end zone. Whether they, they win the state championship or not, they've already won. Oh, yeah. 100%. Good job, guys. All right. Well, back here at home, San Antonio Botanical Garden inviting you to a special holiday event that will leave you dazzled. Our Stephen Cavasso, he's dazzling this morning. <laughs> he's live out there with a look at Lightscape. Good morning, Stephen. Well, it looks like the sun is lighting up this live shot, Max. And Sarah, we are here at the Children's Vegetable Garden, and it looks like we have a few critters that may be in, showing up and invading the spot here, but these are critters that you're absolutely going to love. Here we have Sabina Carr with us one last time. What are we looking at right now? So this is the San Antonio artist, right? And so we wanted to, we have artists from all over the world, but we also have San Antonio. These are garden critters. It's a story of sustainability. And when these are lit at night, they are otherworldly, truly. And the things we're hearing about them are they're quirky, it's lovable, and they're taking tons of photos here. I love that. It looks beautiful. And, what, and really quick, what's going on behind there, behind all these critters? Oh, it's the Children's Vegetable Garden, and this is the community coming out. They have plots, and they've been doing their seasonal vegetables. So it's tomatoes and cucumbers and all kinds of wonderful vegetables. Okay, I, I got to ask that one last question. You know, after such a dark year with the pandemic, why is it important that people come out to lightscape and illuminate their lives again? Well, I think in a botanical garden, nature is so resilient, but people are too. We've all been through a lot and it's changed us. So we wanted to bring the story of joy and light for you and your family and your friends. So come on out and just see lightscape and feel good again. Very good stuff. And we have all that information on our website, ksat.com. Head over there to more information. And I think I'm going to probably explore the garden a little bit more while we're out here, Max and Sarah. Back to you guys. All right, Stephen Cavazos, thank you so much. There's a lot going on in and around the Alamo City. So if you're looking for something to do with the family this weekend, the Christmas Showcase going on at the Freeman Coliseum is an event to buy all things Christmas from decor to crafting to gifts, even treats. It's happening starting at 10 a.m. going to 6 p.m. this evening. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow. You can buy tickets online at christmasshowcase.com or just buy them at the door. Time now, 937, 57 degrees out. Still ahead on GMS 8, Max Brandeis Volleyball Team. Oh, my goodness. They are headed to the big game after they defeated Bridgeland last night in the state semifinals. We have the highlights in sports. Plus one of the most wanted holiday mm. toys caught up in the supply chain mess. If you're someone looking to get your hands on these little toys, we have some information that may help. Taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Hey, hey, some blue skies. 57 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. All right, we got a lot to talk about. In high school sports, starting off the playoffs, playoffs, we had a lot of great teams here in and around the Alamo City. Let's see. Boom. You guys have any questions? We know Alamo Heights put up a lot of points. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, that's us. Look at that. Just straight killing it. Finding the end zone. Boom. Number five, 
four seven. All right, so we are just gonna stick with it. Moving down, there we go, Alamo Heights, big win. Here's the thing, next up, taking a look. Look at that, big man rumble, cutting inside, number one, oh, crossing the plane. Gotta love it, boom. What a day, what a day. Bernie Greyhounds, killing it. That was Corpus Christi Miller, second round of the 4A Division I playoffs at Alamo Stadium. Here we go again, cut in, oh, the man can't be stopped. Boom, Bernie, big win over Corpus Christi Miller. Sorry, Sarah Costa, 63 to 14. I could watch this, this highlight all day, but just so you don't have to. We have so many other highlights from last night's playoff games. Just head on over to KSAT.com, click on the big game coverage section, see the scores, the highlights from all of the top tier games from across the area. But it's not just football, don't worry. We have high school volleyball as well. Brandeis getting ready to play for the state title this evening, beating Bridgeland yesterday in the Class 6A state semifinals. Fourth match, Broncos up two sets to one, tied at 14 all. Pull away for good, Jalen Gibson serves. Nick's the back line, that is an ace. Carly Ferris finds Emma Halstead. Shot off the block and down. Broncos up 19-14, Halstead's got the hot hand. Drilled another one. Brandeis goes on to win it three sets to one. Taking that momentum, at least coming back a little closer. We, we, it was a big stretch at one point, and we knew that we had to come back, you know, and have that energy and fight to show that we weren't going to be done, we weren't going to give up. Our community and our bench and just our team in general, how close we are as a school, as a program, I think that's really led us to get to where we are today because, honestly, I don't think we could do it without the support system that we have. Gotta love it. And a great season for New Braunfels. Canyons volleyball team played earlier in the afternoon yesterday in the Class 5A semifinals against Grapevine. This one went all the way to a fifth set. Canyon keep pace. Courtney Pope hitting one off the block, down, tied it up at two. Kyla Malone drilled a shot to the back line, came up with a big block on the ensuing return. They were tied at five points apiece, but Grapevine closed on a 10-5 run, clinching the win. New Braunfels, Canyon falls short in the semifinals, three sets to two. Here we go. It has been the talk of the town. It is the reason Frost Hour is lit up orange and blue. 15th ranked UTSA getting ready for their biggest game, yet possibly their biggest game in program history. The Roadrunners facing the defending Conference USA champions, University of Alabama at Birmingham for the Conference West Division title. They play today, 2.30 here at home at the Alabama Dome. Got to fill the dome. Obviously, we're going to have the highlights on the night beat and tomorrow, on GMSA. Go Roadrunners. Meet, meet. Birds up. Fill the dome. Fill the dome. Say it. Say it. Fill the dome. No, the other one. Hotter than fish grease. Hotter than fish grease. I'm going to get you a shirt. <laughs> 944, right. 57 degrees out. David Elder joins us after the break. All righty, this animated dumpling toy has a golden chrome body that pops out of its giant head when you squeeze its squishy cheeks. Yes, I just read that. He's one of the <laughs> most wanted gifts this year. Parents are scrambling to get these cuties for their kids this, this holiday season, but the toy maker named Wowie mm. says lots of its inventory from China is trapped in the serious supply chain mess. If you're one of these parents looking to snag this hot dumpling item, you've got a chance coming up soon. The toy maker says it's launching a two pack on November 30th. Did you hear that parents? November 30th, a two pack of dumplings. All right, well you can wait till November 30th, but today the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival at Incarnate Word is back in person. The gates open 3 p.m. Lighting ceremony 6 p.m. Fireworks 9.30. Our very own Steve Spreeser emceeing the event. If you can't make it tonight, the lights will be on from dusk to dawn every day at the university until January 6th. Sarah Spivey, is it going to be a nice day to head out there? It will be. You know, we are going to see this fog clear. Today will be nice. In fact, a lot of people on the roads this weekend heading across the state of Texas for the upcoming holiday week. And if you're planning on being out there today on the roads, you know, we really shouldn't have any problems other than the usual traffic. Uh, temperatures across the state are going to be mild in the 70s, down toward 80 degrees in Brownsville, though. And then tomorrow there is going to be uh, some changes across the state. A cold front will be moving through, so it will be windy. Uh, especially on east uh, 
and west roads as those winds will be from the north. And here in San Antonio, we do have a small chance for rain tomorrow as up front moves through. Better rain chances out toward Houston and down toward Corpus Christi. We've been continuing to see the visibility improve across uh, San Antonio. It's currently 58 degrees with great visibility out there right now. Earlier this image, you couldn't even see any of the street down below because the fog was so dense. And we still have some fog out there. Visibility down to four miles at JBSA Randolph and down to three at Stinson, but all in all some great improvement there when it comes to the fog. We'll have more fog tomorrow morning as well. 58 at the airport, 59 at JBSA Randolph, 55 in Bandera, 53 in Comfort, 59 uh, out toward uh, New Braunfels, as I just mentioned, and 57 in Canyon Lake. All right, take a look at the visible satellite. Although we're seeing pockets of sunshine right now, we've got increasing clouds moving in from the south and from the east, so we're going to have a fairly mostly cloudy morning here. It's in the afternoon that will see partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. Meanwhile, it's totally sunny though out toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass this morning. Humidity has been on the rise. Dew points right now are in the 50s, but over the next couple of hours and into the overnight hours, we're going to see those dew points get up into the 60s. And you will definitely notice this tonight because it's not going to get as cold tonight. Once the sun sets at 537, we'll be in the 60s and very mild. So looking at the forecast today, 58 at 10, 68 at noon, increasing humidity throughout the day, 74 for the high temperature, south winds at 10 to 50, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. And then tomorrow it will be humid to start the day. We're going to have areas of fog again, and it's going to stay fairly cloudy tomorrow. Only a few peaks of sunshine here and there. That front will move through close to 4 or 5 p.m. With it will be a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm, but we're not expecting much rain out of this. The biggest difference will be that it will become less humid behind that front and breezy with winds from the north at about 20 miles per hour. Hour. Then a fairly mild week and a quick preview of Thanksgiving for you. Does look like on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, we are going to have cloudy skies with scattered showers, some rumbles of thunder possible as well. Temperatures will be in the 60s for the high. Then a front will move through and by Black Friday, it'll be much cooler highs only in the low 60s. So taking a look at the seven day forecast again, uh, muggy tomorrow with morning fog and then mild with low humidity. It's going to be really nice Monday and Tuesday of this upcoming week. More humid Wednesday and of course Thursday will have those scattered showers and storms and that front will cool things down again for Black Friday. Max and Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 952, 58 degrees out. Take a look at these lotto numbers. There they are. Pick three, three, five, seven, fireball zero, daily four, six, six, three, four, fireball two. Cash five, four, 14, 16, 21, 26. Here we go, Mega Millions. Five, 23, 52, 53, 59. Big number 18, Mega Pyre five. Good luck. We'll be right back. All right, we do have molds in the air today, but they're low at 330. That is the only allergen in today's pollen count. And as far as temperatures go today, we'll be up to 74 degrees. Morning fog tomorrow and then a high temperature of 76. The front is going to move through in the afternoon. Low humidity on Monday and Tuesday. We'll be seeing cold mornings and comfortable afternoons Monday and Tuesday. And then a front is going to move through on Thanksgiving Day itself, giving us a chance for scattered showers in storms. Man, it smells good in here. We've got David Elder of Texas Seeds. That was a great thought. I just <laughs> wish that we could have recorded Sarah Costa we could putting hear you this guys. pizza up. We could hear we it. Could it's hear. an art. It is it's an art. Do you want to give the fist pump you just gave? I was, was so a, excited to not fall under was the that, desk. Was that a fist pump not to throw the pizza on the desk or because David Elder's here? Both. David yeah. Elder is here. He's going to give us a sneak peek of this week's episode of Texas Eats. Hey, two weekends in a row you brought us pizza. I'm loving it right now. We're loving ba -da -ba -ba -ba. it. That's what I'm doing. Say. You know, I, I love bringing in any of the good stuff. And the pizza that you have right there, mm -hmm. um, this is actually like their house special, right? Mm -hmm. And what I love about it the most, have you ever seen the movie Goodfellas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that scene when, when they're in prison and he's cutting the garlic with the little yes. razor blade. Yeah. 
that's what this reminds me of. It's razor thin garlic that's on there, just melts into the pizza, becomes like translucent and just kind of evaporates into there. You just get the essence of it. There's a I lot love of the meat spot. On this pizza. Roman's Pizza is a cool little place off Callahan's. <laughs> I think this should be in the MoMA or something. The way that you present these pizzas is incredible. They got the garlic knots, the chicken wings, the pastas, the pizzas, they have salads. And get this, he's actually from Miami and they make Cuban sandwiches. Oh, and that's what Sarah Spivey's eating. Yes. And that's what's hey, going on. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> it's delicious. Is it good? Yeah, it's very good. You know, I think that it's fun because they have such a diverse menu, and there's, there's something for everyone when you go out there. Um, they're going to be on the show today. We also have a classic barbecue joint from out of San Antonio yes. on the show today. Which is? Two Bros Barbecue. Two Bros. Oh. No more sneaks. No more. But this place, you guys saw this one earlier. This is the shack. Guess what? I'm going to tell you something. Mm. Um, I had a hand in making that burger. No, <laughs> please explain. Yeah. I, I went there, this was actually years ago, right when they first opened, and I saw their menu, I was like, I'm very impressed. The shack has cool food, and a lot of it is just like over the top, and I was like, you guys, have you ever thought about doing like, I don't know, a four patty cheeseburger? Were, yeah. were, did you and they say were that like, seriously, or are you just kind of throwing it out? I wanted to see if they could do it, and look at that monster. What kind of cheese is on there, David? Um, it has Kiss. multiple cheeses, <laughs> but the one on top that made it really gooey was the queso, like the little melted cheese on top. And this place right here, Two Bros, classic barbecue joint in San Antonio. They've been mm. over a decade. Yes. Uh, just really representing for the Alamo City on the barbecue scene. This right here, this is a Chicago, yes. a Chicago bite. I love the food over there. I didn't know that Where Chicago's known for smothered like fried chicken. They I have the special sauce, either. catfish. I was like, mm. I had no idea. I thought that was more of like a Southern thing. It is the best catfish where, where in, I've ever had. I'm serious. Located, I'm so David? excited to go back and try it. Um, that one is off of Evans Road 281. Okay. Yeah, that, and it is really solid food. I love that even the Chicago dogs, really simple, but they just take it to the next level. And I love that. Can we talk about the garlic knots in front of you? <laughs> yes. Like, we can't just I've sleep never on seen those. Sarah yeah. Costa so excited than when what you walk are in those? those? What are those? Yeah, that's exactly actually what she said when she said, what are those? Couldn't help myself. Oh, there you go. Oh, hey. Boom. Oh, I love that. You guys are you guys are lucky. How many cameras you got we in here? We are so lucky, but... You got uh, cameras in the hallway out here? I don't even know what's going <laughs> on. Everything. question. The four patty burger that you had a hand in creating, <laughs> yes. were you able to take a clean bite? You got to watch and see. Oh, oh. good yeah. <laughs> Did you finish the burger? You got to watch and see. Okay, <laughs> I love it. And David, how many more new episodes do you have the rest of this season? Get this, I love that you brought that up. Thank mm. you so much. Yep, so yep. after Thanksgiving week, we go into December, which is going to be our season of giving. Ooh. All through December, we're giving away thousands of dollars worth of giveaways. Nice. I mean, big prizes, y'all. So you guys got to watch to learn how you can enter, get the secret mm. word, all that good stuff. But I'm telling you, it's going to be nuts. Our season of giving is, is just wild already. I'm excited. I want to enter for the prizes. But they Wait, said I can't. Uh, yeah, fine. we can't. Max and I can't <laughs> enter either. I mean, maybe we could. Like Bobby, a fake how are we something. feeling over there? <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> she's like, nom, 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 nom. It's good. <laughs> got 20 seconds left. Yes. I'm what super, else, uh, yeah, what we else got, going I mean, here? we got the pastas in the front, mm -hmm. the chicken wings, the garlic knots, the pizza. This is Roman's Pizza. It's going to be on the show today, you guys. We have so many good places you have to watch. And we even go to Corpus Christi for seafood. Corpus Christi!